Ip Man Kung Fu Master is a new movie that rose to prominence after its American release date was announced. However, many people mistook it for another film in Donnie Yen's Ip Man franchise, which it's not. Let me explain to you the Ip Man canon. Now, there are two Ip Man film templates. And what I mean is templates is that these are the two movie franchises or movies that are super important to all other depictions of Ip Man. In fact, most Ip Man movies came from hopping on the success of these two. So, uh, here are the first two ones. So, before or these movies were made, uh, Ip Man was only depicted as Bruce Lee's teacher in movies and TV shows about Bruce Lee. He never had his own importance until these two. The first one is the famous uh, Donnie Yen franchise, which was directed by a Wilson Yip. Uh, the second one was a, a movie called The Grandmaster, directed by Wong Kar Wai. These are the two original franchise depictions of Ip Man. And as the first one is more of the Superman beat -em up guy, and the other one, and the Wong Kar Wai one, is more of a more artistic one, a more calming, and a more of just an art depiction. While the first one does have drama as well, it's more of like a beat -em up thing. Now, it's important to note that while all, not all movies that imitate these two templates are ripoffs, because many of them do have the real Ip Man's uh, son, sons in there. Uh, you do have to note that a lot of them just do capitalize off the success of these two movies. So these are the like two original versions of Ip Man. Now we're going to be talking about this one as this one is mainly a standalone film. But it's also a good one so you should check it out. Now here is the timeline of Ip Man. First... The first one, I'll be honest, I can't confirm whether it is canon or not. All I do know is it ha does have relation to Wilson the Ip's thing, and Wilson the Ip did get a guy to make a TV series. But And I'm not even sure if it's good, but this is the uh, Ip Man TV show. Oh, this came in like 2013 or something, but it's like the first one in the can- It takes place with like a young Ip Man, and it's like the first one in- the canon, though it's kind of, we'll put like that lightning rod as like a divider as we're, I'm not sure of it's complete, of how canon it is, and I haven't actually seen it for myself. All I know is that it was also helped made by Wilson Yip, and it was Wilson Yip, Wilson Yip uh, tasked some guys to make it. So now let's do the first actual Ip Man film. Um, this one is about how Ip Man fights the Japanese. Now, yeah, I have to note that uh, a lot of these films aren't historically accurate, but the first one, uh, I think the main reason it isn't historically accurate is because um, the, actually Ip Man never fled uh, Foshan, or Foshan, sorry, I pronounced it wrong. Um, they, uh, he never fled it because of the Japanese. He uh, he did get approached by some people, little Japanese people, to teach them uh, Kung Fu, but uh, he said no, or he may have, I don't know, but I, there's rumors that he actually did, but it, no, nothing much happened. And so, yeah, the important thing to know, though, is that, you know, the Cultural Revolution is what made him left for Hong Kong. And, uh, you know, since Hong Kong is now part of China, and China has that, like, oh, if you say anything bad, uh, we'll kill you kind of attitude, you, you, you can't say it, so they tend to blame it on the Japanese. Although, oh, yeah, yeah, because it was around the same time period, so it kind of worked, I guess. And then, this after that, here comes Ip Man 2. This is the, uh, actually a really good one. It's also, um really important as it uh, ha establishes Bruce Lee near, near the end and it establishes Ip Man as a teacher. He grows into like, you know, the guy we know who teaches Bruce Lee. And then after that, we have Ip Man 3. Ip Man, Bruce Lee is trying to convince Ip Man to teach him. Ip Man isn't so enthusiastic about it. He doesn't really care. Uh, uh, yeah, so Ip Man is there, and he has to, oh yeah, by the way, Mike Tyson's in this movie for some reason, but yeah, it's kind of like, you know, 
it's a good movie because it also has him the first time he's fighting another opponent who also trains in Wing Chun. It's like a battle between like you know modernized and like improvised Wing Chun unorthodox, and his opponent is like a traditional, super traditionalist who is like you know kind of like you know kind of an ant guy. And speaking of his opponent, uh, his opponent lost. Uh, it's the dude Master Z. Uh, I think his name is Chung Tin Chi and uh, or Master Z, and uh, he uh, gets his own spin-off movie. So there's like like a split in the timeline, and it's though I'm pretty sure it's it is canon though to the It Man movie thing. Thing and uh, then there's there's It Man Four, or or which is in the main timeline part in the main movie franchise, not a spin-off. And so, yeah, that's the canon. And there may be a sequel to Master Z, but yeah, this is the final one. It Man Kung Fu Master is not It Man 5, as it is not made by the same people or anything. I don't want to call it a ripoff because uh, it is a sequel to its own thing. And it does have, like, you know, It Man's uh, son in it to help act in it. And, like, you know, it's kind of like a blessing like thing. But, uh,. I think the thing is, it did capitalize, the first movie in that series did capitalize off the whole Donnie Yen, Wilson Yip thing, thing. and there are some movies that actually kind of go, kind of actually uh, rip off of this one too, and yeah, I think the reason why these two actually are so much better than many of those movies is because they actually, because like while this one teach, treats it men kind of like a superhero, and kind of like a Chinese folk martial artist hero, and this one is just more like a biopic that's kind of like an art-like thing, just like art and stuff, and it's just like going with the flow. Uh, I think the thing is they also do depict him as a like human, while the other ones just turn him into a full-on superhero, make Bruce Lee references and to like Kato and whatnot, and like from the Green Hornet and Kato. Uh, I think the main thing is, though, they treat him like a human, because you have to remember, it man is a real guy, but the thing is, a lot of the depiction, other depictions aren't original, they're usually stemming from Donnie Yen, this one, or Tony Leung's, uh, one, and so, yeah, that is basically the it man canon. Uh, they may make some spin-offs between here, like Bruce Lee being taught, they are making, like, a sequel to this one, uh, but so far in the main series, uh, It Man 4 was the last one, because it ended, like, a couple, it ended, like, like, almost a decade later, where, like, you know, he was dead, Bruce Lee went to his funeral, and he was dead, um, Bruce Lee apparently didn't actually go to his funeral, but that was for, like, reasons, I don't think it was, like, a feud or anything, it was just, like, movies or something, but, uh, yeah, basically, it is kind of, uh, important. And so, yeah, the Ip Man movies don't really have much historical accuracy, but they're really fun to watch, and they still, like, kind of depict Ip Man as, like, the guy, the Ip Man, like, as a martial artist at his core, they kind of do depict his ideals and morals as him being, like, you know, he improvises, you know, like, um, that's kind of the thing in, like, martial arts is that, like, you know, improv improvisation is, like, very important, so, uh, yeah, this is the, uh, Ip Man canon.